Okay, so for anybody watching on YouTube, this is the first part of the distance on Nightmare. What have we got? Kill 10 walkers, try not to get surrounded. I've already managed to get a lot of people hurt. It's just... I just have. Um, I'm going to make a few little changes here. Let's have Connie. Love that assault rifle. Absolutely love it. Yeah, I think I want to have Tyrese. He's good, he's fun. Do we go with Mr. Mercer? No, I think we go with Minces. Viewers like it when streamers suffer, yes. Or if you're playing something competitive, whenever there's a bit of salt in the wound. Uh, even I watch even I watch salty stream videos. I even I watch sort of you know very good players playing something competitive like For Honor or whatever and then people just absolutely losing their mind, going berserk and, and quite where the appeal is, I couldn't even say. It's Schadenfreude, I guess. It's very immature. It shouldn't be funny. But it is. It's just always funny. Um, and I think it kind of, it can impart a good lesson as well, because you just like, you, you watch these people sort of screaming and shouting, and then you think, oh man, I hope I never do that, and then you realise that you kind of do, and, you, and, and then you kind of think like, hmm, I'm going to stop doing that now, because it just, it's, it's ridiculous, objectively. Uh, what I like to stream, I, they, they tend to be more sort of, Less competitive games. I mean, I've I've done a video on uh, Call of Duty. I think Call of Duty multiplayer. I might do more because I just I enjoy it. I'm average at it, I guess. But yeah, for the most part, when I'm playing games, it, it tends to be the more sort of cooperative, sort of team stuff or single player stuff. I mean. I, I absolutely loved doing this war of mine, which of course is, is strictly single player. Although I think that the experience is a good one to share. So those are the kind of games that I'm kind of umming and ahhing about. I know that uh, Gemma, that's my wife by the way, wants to do us playing old school Battlefront 2, Star Wars Battlefront 2. That edition, that iteration of it, actually has couch co-op um, and we are insanely good at it so it'd be us you know versus the computer but we are amazing at it and it might be fun just to sort of stream that it's it's slightly old school you know the graphics aren't quite up there with the modern battlefront 2 of course because i think it came out like 2004 something like that but my gosh in terms of gameplay sheer fun okay can't move out until this place is silenced. I think we've got a team that can do that. Old school games are so good. I, I think um, you, you, you get a lot of great modern games. You, you can plumb the depths for absolutely fantastic retro games as well. There's just there's a lot of good games out there. I mean, this... This is the gift that keeps on giving because I think it's it's a good one for videos. I you know I think you can do a lot with this to make interesting videos and stuff. So I kind of like that. Now what are we uh, what are we doing here? There's no rush here. This is kill all walkers. We don't have to do anything like preserve our charge points because Connie can get those. This is one of the joys of Connie, even if there are no walkers on screen. You can still get charge points, just by being close to her. It's one of those things, um, Outlaw Negan is an absolute hero. He's a great character, I, I love Knock Knock. Um, an advantage is that you can put your people wherever you want on the map, you don't have to wind up cuddled up next to Connie to get the benefit of her leadership trait, you know, 
if you have Outlaw Negan, you can move wherever you want. But you're kind of reliant on a target-rich environment, whereas Connie doesn't matter what the walkers are doing, the enemies, whatever they may be, doesn't matter. You can make use of Connie's leadership ability. Again, having to wind up adjacent to her, I mean, that seems like it should be a problem, but it, it isn't. We're going to keep on going with this. I recently played XCOM, the very first one, and it's fantastic. I remember that coming out on the PlayStation. I mean the original PlayStation. Back when you had a memory card that slotted into the controller, and that's where you would save, XCOM was notable because you it used an entire um, memory card, which was kind of nuts. So you could only have one save game at any time. But it was, yeah, I mean the XCOM games just, it was great. Uh, Apocalypse, I think, was the best iteration that came out. I think it came out in 1999. Uh, and it was set in a city. And it was kind of, it was more like an open world kind of thing. You could move around the city. There were uh, there was an, a cult that loved the aliens, and they would sometimes make things difficult for you. But then you could find out where they were, and you could go in there, and you could just ruin their uh, their temple. You just go in there, guns blazing, and just trash the place. There was, there was a lot of stuff that you could do, and of course, turn-based mechanics, kind of a classic system works so well in this and many other games as well. Okay, so we've got to kill that tough walker. Where is he? So he's not on fire or anything. So I mean, we've got to we've got to go gear him. I think we can do this. We can get out of there. Because we've got a mace that stuns everything, let's wind up cuddled up next to our buddies. And then let us make a move. Good little combo this. I do I do like it. It's pretty powerful. So we're gonna move into the last bit, as I think of it. The last her 